Okay, I just wanted to tell you about the new uh, tool the library has to work with Blackboard. It puts um, the library databases um, into your Blackboard course. So it's sort of a reading list that's constructed by, by us um, based on your syllabus or a reading list that you would have. And it makes a very convenient student reading experience. A lot of times students don't know how to find things. They just need to read what they need to read for that discussion board. Rather than have people go fishing for all this stuff, it puts it all up front into your course. So that's what we're working on. And a lot of you might be wondering, is this relevant to me or my course? And I would say if you use books, ebooks, articles, YouTube videos, CNN.com, you know, websites, whatever, um, then yes, it would be useful to you. We put everything in this uh, list together. So it's a convenient place to kind of compile it all together. Um, a lot of you are wondering, why, are they, why is the library doing this now? We sort of always did it, but you might not have heard about it. And here's why. So we actually had two parallel processes running to do this kind of thing. And so you all might have interacted with ATDL and our copyright officer, Mary Ann. Uh, but we also, for in-person classes, were doing what was called reserve lists. So we would get a Word document, usually by email, and we'd painstakingly cut and paste together links directly to the articles. Um, we put them in our online catalog. And then eventually the faculty member would get like a single link to our online catalog record for their course. It was very manual. And then while this was going on for online classes, um, ATDL and Mary Ann would get Word documents of this, you know, similar thing, a syllabus or a reading list for copyright clearance, look them all over and, you know, make sure they're all pass muster, and then would either paste links directly to the items into your reading list or faculty members would manually upload PDFs and it was it was very time consuming both ways and it was a little bit confusing because there would be two different ways of doing things and it was it was a lot of time. So instead we have this new tool called Discover for Learn and it is the Discover Library Databases um, kind of married to uh, SGU Learn, which is our iteration of Blackboard, and we hope it's a, a beautiful relationship until we get a new LMS, at which point it would just be Discover with something else. So there you go. Um, just to give you an idea, this is our process we receive. You, all you need to do is either email, drop off a list. We follow all these processes depending on what kind of items are on that list. Everything is compiled together to a master list, and you would then be able to copy that list to your course or an instructional designer would put that list into your uh, the OCDS for copying for online courses to work with that process. So we're working on ironing out details with that, but in general the library puts everything together and then you would be copying from us. Just to give you an idea, there's a couple, there's a bunch of different um, ways of configuring a list. In this example, there's just a few citations with a folder of news articles because maybe the news articles change a lot, you can change the folder. Um, in this example, there's sort of more by modules or topics, so you have some flexibility here. Um, you can have big, a big pile of links or you can have it all organized and it can be by weeks, week one, week two, week three, etc. So why don't I show you as an instructor what this stuff will look like. So I'm just going to go into my organization space just to show you. And this is a demo list by weeks. So I'd be able to, as an instructor or a student, click back and forth between weeks and see the items in the various folders. Um, and it's great, these are actually go straight to the items, so this one will go straight here. There we go. Um, or this will let you download immediately. There we go. So you can see, um, but in general, we can work with you on how to configure it. So people are wondering, you know, how does this work? What are some challenges here? The only thing I would say is make sure your citations are as complete as possible. If it's just like an author and a title, sometimes we can have trouble figuring out which, which article you wanted. Um, if you did have to order an article or you downloaded it from somewhere else, it's useful for us to know just so we have lead time to order it ourselves or if you have it, you can pass it on. 
Um, I know it's a new tool, so I'm sorry that, you know, people are like, why is there another piece of software out there? Well, we can work with it, so hopefully we can help you with that. And um, you do have to coordinate a bit with us, so as early as possible would be useful. And just remember that library staff can't see inside your actual course. We are building a list outside of the course, and then you would copy it over, and I have do documentation on that. But one of the benefits is actually um, statistics are better for you and better for me. So if you download a PDF from the library and upload it to your course, that may be copyright compliant, but unfortunately, we would only get one count use. We'd say, okay, that got used once. If you upload it to a course using our tool, if you use our listing tool, we would be able to count every single time a student downloaded it. So we would know really what's going to use very quickly. So it, it can really help us. Um, it also just helps us work together so students have kind of a easy bridge to get over to the library. There's no lurking around for them. They just can kind of download what they need. Here I am in my class as a student. So um, this is how it will look to a student just to give you guys a general idea. So um, I put some examples over here under online. So um, most of the time a reading list can just be floating around in whatever content area that you want. So here's a, a list I put into weeks. So you can see you can click it and it puts you into this tool. This is actually in Blackboard, but you're in Discover for Learn down here. So you can see the Discover logo and you're inside Blackboard. So you could access this whole reading list this way. Um, the other way you could do it is you could have a link within a module. So this is the same list within a module and it puts you into the list. There you go. Um, or you can actually have a link to it where you made a copy and just put what was in that week in that list so that the link within your module or folder could take you to just that week's readings or could take you to all the week readings. And it just might take some maintenance here. Um, what we do is we put one master list together and it will look like this. I'll have all the weeks on it, but um, you know, sometimes you, uh, yeah, so you can see, um, so this is the list uh, by students again, and here's all the weeks, and so I'm a student here, I can just look at my textbook, that happens to be an ebook that the library owns, I know that's a little, um, a little plug, we own ebooks, um, you can also link to various items in the list, so this is uh, week eight, and I have to analyze the case, so there's text directions, as well as links to articles. And of course, if you work with us, we will continue to um, help you be copyright compliant with the assistance of Marianne, so everything will be good. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what this tool can do. Please contact the library if you have any questions.